So here's the cameras on. <laughs> um, have any experiences in your personal lives affected what we see in your novels? To think about that one. That's a question I actually haven't heard. Um, <laughs> actually, the very first scene in my book is um, kind of based on an experience in my life. I had a when I was in high school, I had a friend in pottery class. Sorry, <laughs> a friend in pottery class, and she was kind of like a straight laced student and kind of almost a goody two shoes, didn't get into any trouble or anything and met a guy in pottery and we all know how that goes. And uh, she um <laughs> pottery leads to over the course of took a long walk weeks. on the beach. Yeah they did. <laughs> interesting decisions and um, kind of disappeared for a while and then when she came back to school she looked completely different than she was and there were lots of rumors going around about what had happened to her, where had she been and um, so that first scene when she came, comes back to school, that scene is the first chapter of my book when Nikki comes back to school and faces all these rumors about where she's been and stuff like that. So it's definitely inspired by a true story. Anybody else have any answers? <laughs> I think on a micro level for me, just, you know, like I have taken archery lessons, so that comes in handy when I'm writing Harry, um, but nothing is, you know, like as big scale, as large scale as that, so. I had the, um, in Unearthly, I had the British history class in Unearthly is based almost exactly on a British history class that I had in high school, so <laughs> that was fun. I wish we had British history. I actually went to high school across the street, <laughs> so... Yeah, it was cool. It was we felt really lucky to have British history. So, awesome teacher. Yeah, <laughs> have you killed you're anyone with a touch? Asylum. I, I spent my childhood locked in an asylum, and, <laughs> and and it's to this day I still can't really touch people. Well, then don't get too <laughs> It's really dramatic. I, in, uh, and a reader actually asked me specifically to ask this one, but have you ever based a character in your books off of somebody you've met in real life or one of your friends or family? I haven't. Well, see, my mom dated the captain of the football team. Well, not the captain. <laughs> he was, like, on the football team, and his name was Joe Caputo. And so when I wrote my book, I kind of had this image of this, you know, football god in my book, and I named him Jack Caputo. <laughs> my mom's like, you can't name him Jack Caputo. I'm like, I changed the name. It's not Joe. It's Jack. And she was not <laughs> So, yeah, it, the name stayed. Just that history teacher, <laughs> really. And um, here's one about, you know, the reading side of things, but... What book do you think that everybody alive should read? That's not your own book, of course. <laughs> a Wrinkle in Time. Come back to me. Think about it for a little bit. Um, to Kill a Mockingbird. I love that book. I feel like I have nothing to say today. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I have no idea. Hard, like the one book question. that everyone should read. Like that's really. Yeah, that is. Because, like, everyone is so different. I feel yeah, like there yeah. were, like, books that I needed to read as a kid, but I grew up in a very different environment. Yeah. Than, like, no, now can I change my answer? Because that's a really good answer. And we all know <laughs> what it feels like to be told to make, you know, to be made to read something, yeah. and then you're like, I hate this. So I would say just, you know, the book that everyone needs to read is the book that makes them fall in love with the reading. You know, it's whatever that book so is. Beautiful. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> Erase everyone else's answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, to kill a mockingbird? That's not that bad. <laughs> well, I can imagine I a reader that, that would hate to kill a mockingbird. So oh, yeah. That totally makes sense. Yeah. And um, this was a good one I found on my Twitter feed was if you had to give up reading or writing, which one would you give up? <gasps> I give up breathing. <laughs> That's really hard. I don't know. I mean, it's painful to even Lady or the dragon. The tiger, right? Lady or the tiger. Yeah, I think most of the people who follow me are generally the pessimists of the reading world. <laughs> I think I'd rather get my foot cut off. You know, I'd rather like I'd rather lose a limb 
<laughs> the one that fits your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica brought just one shoe. Oh uh, yeah, I brought one boot. <clears throat> oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah. On this awesome. afternoon. And um, here's a good one, because I've always, you know, I, I write too. So, um, do you plot or write by the seat of your pants? Pants. I'm assuming you've heard this question before. Yeah, I'm both. I'm a, a plotter who likes to rebel. Pants are to the core. <laughs> I think, for me, it's, it's changed from book to book. Mm -hmm. um, I think it depends on the idea, it depends on the inspiration. I like both. I like, you know being really comfortable and and feeling like there's a lot of room for the characters to breathe and move around and I like to know sort of where they're headed so a little of both. And I'm, I think I'm going to save the rest of the questions for later or else Great. I'm going to run out. Okay. <laughs> but thank